uh, Speaker Pelosi last December in a meeting with Steny Hoyer, myself, and Congresswoman Baldwin, agreed to bring two pieces of legislation up this year. One, a hate crimes bill, and two, end it. We understood that transgender inclusion was going to be difficult. In early September, after testifying on behalf of transgender inclusion at the hearing, understanding that we had a problem, I then learned from leaders at that committee, fully supportive of a transgender inclusive bill, that we didn't have the votes to pass it. The question then is, should we kill the whole bill? And here I have a very profound difference with people who say that we should. The fact that you can't be sure it's going to be signed is no excuse not to go forward. There have been legitimate criticisms of people not putting the bills forward because you rarely, I don't think a, any discrimination bill in the history of the world has passed, in the history of this country, has passed on its first effort. We are in a position now where we could get a positive vote on sexual orientation. I don't think George Bush is going to sign it. I don't think he's even going to sign the hate crimes bill, although I hope we can push him into that as part of the defense bill. But getting that passed now is going to put us in a much better position to do it in 2009, and it's an important sign to the rest of the country that we're making progress. On the other hand, an announcement that this new Democratic Congress, led by a woman who has been as committed to full rights for gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people in every aspect for her career, that she had to kill a gay rights bill and couldn't do anything at all, would I think be the most negative message we could send. Understand that the argument against going forward without a fully inclusive bill is not tactical. There are people who say that even if you had the votes to pass it, even if 2009 comes and you have the votes to sign into law a bill protecting people against discrimination based on sexual orientation in jobs everywhere in the country, you may not do it until you include everybody. I think that's profoundly wrong on the moral sense. I think you protect people when you can. I also think politically the notion that you don't do anything until you do everything is self-defeating. And here's the thing that bothers me. I think there is a tendency in American politics for the people who feel most passionately about an issue, particularly when their focus is on a single issue, to be unrealistic in what a democratic political system can deliver. And that can be self-defeating. And uh, dealing with sexual orientation has been the primary legislative goal for most of the past few decades, eclipsed only temporarily by our need to defeat the marriage amendment. We are now in a position in the House of Representatives to pass a bill in America which bans discrimination based on sexual orientation. Maybe we get it in the Senate or not. I know they'll have a majority. Maybe they even get to 60. It has been the goal. People have supported it. People have criticized the Congress for not pushing it. If my colleagues now say, wait a minute, let me understand this. For decades, you said this is your goal. We're now able to deliver it through a tough set of votes, because this will still be tough for a lot of people in tough districts. And now you're telling me you don't want it? Now you're telling me it's not good enough, what you've been asking for for 30 years? Because, I mean, I do not think it's in the interest of the community of which I am a part to take the posture that we will want something until we can get it. And once we can get it, we won't want it anymore. We'll want something else unattainable. I'm talking about an attitude that says, we want this, and we are indifferent to how to get it. We will demand that you give it to us, and if you don't give it to us, we'll punish our friends. And this is what's, what's troubling me about this burst of activity now. Where was the lobbying for transgender inclusion when, in December, Nancy Pelosi announced we were going to do it, and we knew that we had this fight? It was only when the Democratic leadership said, you know what, we want to do this, but we don't have the votes, that people said, how dare you say that? Now, here's some of the characteristics of these very ideologically committed single-issue groups. First of all, I must tell you, I think there is a tendency to talk excessively to each other and not to understand the broader political reality. Secondly, it is an article of faith among many of these groups that you should never accept that any elected official means well. Because any strategic difference, let me go even further, any difference in the perception of reality does not, it's not to be treated as an intellectual difference, it's to be treated as a betrayal. It's to be treated as a failure of moral will. I worry about colleagues of mine from tough districts who have finally said, oh, okay, I'm gonna vote for this gay rights bill. It's not a gimme in America. And now they're gonna be criticized when they come from tough districts, beat a Republican incumbent in a district carried by George Bush. I'm talking about to win this, we need to get the votes of people who beat Republican incumbents last year in districts that voted for George Bush.
and we're going to yell at them because they only vote to protect people against discrimination based on sexual orientation and not because they're not yet ready to vote to include transgender? I, I will say this, by the way. I have been in legislative bodies since 1972. I have voted to protect people against discrimination based on race, ethnicity, gender, and disability, and age. When I voted for those, I was not the beneficiary of any of them. But there is this, you, you start with this lack of understanding of the difficulty politically in this country. This is a country that twice voted for George Bush. We're making progress. It's a great thing. I don't know if any, I would have thought a couple years ago we'd be at the point where we can pass this bill. What we're now seeing, not the disagreement, not people saying we want it to be inclusive. I'm glad they're doing that. I'm glad they're lobbying for that. But this, how dare you think about doing a partial bill? You've betrayed us. The anger is very counterproductive, and it's going to make it harder for us to mobilize support in the future. What we're now seeing, not the disagreement, not people saying we want it to be inclusive. I'm glad they're doing that. I'm glad they're lobbying for that. But this, how dare you think about doing a partial bill? You've betrayed us. The anger is very counterproductive, and it's going to make it harder for us to mobilize support in the future. And this general sense that there are no allies, that Nancy Pelosi, the most supportive person in an important position in the history of this country on LGBT issues, becomes someone who gets demonized. This is a moment of truth, as far as I'm concerned, for responsible liberals in the Democratic Party. The question is, can we govern responsibly? And governing responsibly means working with everybody, listening to and exchanging views with the people who care passionately, putting goals in a common way. But then as you go forward with the goals, taking reality into account. And people who then denounce those who take reality into account and try and address strategies, I think they make it impossible for us to govern. The headline will be, Pelosi pulls gay rights bill from agenda. The Democratic Congress, led by Speaker Pelosi from San Francisco today, had to acknowledge that they do not have the votes to pass a bill protecting people against discrimination based on sexual orientation. Later on in the story, it will mention this other issue. I don't understand how anybody thinks that helps us in our cause. So for all those reasons, uh, I, I intend to push forward with this. And I, I, I have to say, I want to, I wish this weren't happening. But now that it's happening, I think silence would be a mistake. You tell people what's up. I think this is, it is morally important for the Democrats to go forward, both to do everything we can to protect millions of people who would otherwise be unprotected from sexual orientation discrimination, and to show that liberals who are interested in fundamental social change can govern responsibly, and that we can put together coalitions and accomplish something, and not allow ourselves to defeat each other by giving the most passionate and involved and engaged groups a veto over any strategy that might make a real advance. As a gay man who has been asking my overwhelmingly, the majority of my, my straight colleagues, I was about to say overwhelmingly straight. I'm not saying they're overwhelmingly straight. I'm saying the majority, an overwhelming majority of them are straight. I'm not trying to give them a number, um, but um, on the scale. <laughs> but the, uh, uh, the, the, I have been asking these people to take tough decisions. We have members of Congress who defeated Republican incumbents in districts that George Bush carried. And I'm asking them to vote for a bill to ban discrimination based on sexual orientation, which has been our community's primary goal for a long time. And the notion that they will then get attacked for doing that from our people is a terrible threat to my ability to continue to get support in the future. So I'm perfectly willing to let, let, let them holler at me. Uh, and, and, and leave these other people alone, and I have to come to their defense.